Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today's gonna be a really busy day. I just got my ACT clutch in. We're gonna be doing an unboxing, and then I want to explain some of the mistakes that I made when buying some clutches. We tried to piece one together, and it didn't work out right. So I'm gonna explain what happened and why I chose ACT, and then we're gonna be putting this in the car and driving it. I've got several videos that I've recorded halfway that I'm actually gonna be completing today. All those will be in the description below where we are taking out the clutch and explaining what happened, getting the new clutch unboxed and installed. And then we're also gonna be reviewing Royal Purple Synchromax transmission fluid. Again, all these are gonna be busted up into three different videos. So let's get this unboxed. And then we're gonna talk about what happened and how you can avoid the same issues with your E46 project. Well, I didn't expect it to be packaged so so nicely, but it's kind of a bit of an experience to open this up. It's kind of like opening up a brand new phone. So this box is obviously very heavy because it's got, I'm assuming, everything in it. All right, so we have our pilot bearing and the four puck unsprung clutch and then our spline grease here. And then it looks like we've got some instructions, some more paperwork. So we'll be going over that before installing it. And then here is our pressure plate with all the bolts for it. Here's our clutch alignment tool, throw out bearing. So this is all packaged up pretty nicely. I, I'm, I'm actually impressed that it's as fun to unbox this as it was most of the time you're just pulling boxes apart. But I'd be willing to bet that they've got all of this nice and compact so they can get a full clutch into the smallest box possible so you're not spending so much on shipping. But there you go, pretty straightforward. We're going to go through the instructions and I wanna talk about why I went with the ACT setup. All right, so story time, and I hope that this experience will help anybody out there looking to do a clutch system so you don't run into the same issues I had. So originally, I had the ECS Tuning Stage 2 clutch, which does 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque rated conservatively. Now what happened, and I did a video on this, is the pilot bearing exploded. Now, pilot bearing is this little guy right here, and once the bearings got out of there, it went all over the clutch and ruined the entire system. ECS tuning was really cool. They returned the old damaged one and sent me a new one, which is good customer service, but I had actually had it on the car duration time for quite a while. Even though I drive it during the summer and it sits all winter long, that I had only done about 3,000 miles on the car or so, and so they returned the clutch and sent me a new one. I had bought this clutch originally thinking that I would never exceed the horsepower, and everybody knows how that goes. I was told it can handle 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque. And funny enough, I actually ended up dynoing 400 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque at the wheel. What we weren't realizing was those numbers were probably rated at the crank. So crank torque, I was probably doing closer to 465, and the clutch just wasn't handling it. Again, the car hasn't been driven a ton, it spends all winter in the garage, and so again, even though it had been quite a while since I put that clutch in the car, I was able to prove that, look, the car's only done, this many miles and I'm slipping really bad and it just never stopped slipping. So the clutch was just gonna get worse and worse and worse. Because ECS Tuning told me that they were confident that clutch would hold the power I have, they refunded it and this is where we are now. Now before I ended up ordering the ACT, they had a four puck unsprung clutch just like this one for sale for like $200. It was made by Saks and they had a Saks pressure plate. Now I was watching another channel where they were doing a diesel E46 and diesels, as most people know, produce a lot of torque and that system handled the torque really well. So I was thinking, well, great, that's the one I'll do and I'll just find a flywheel for it. But this is what I didn't realize. There's two different types of pressure plates and flywheels for these E46s. One of them has an indent on the flywheel side. So this one here, you can actually see there's an indent. This level here where the pressure plate is gonna sit is actually higher than the rest of this disc. And that's actually so the clutch can sit on here and the pressure plate can sit over top of it. If there isn't a space on the flywheel, then there has to be a space on the pressure plate. And what we were fighting was I had a flywheel that was flat and the stock pressure plates are flat. So it wasn't going to allow the clutch to sit in there because there wasn't any room for it. The OEM flywheel on these cars has an indent and you can see that when you're looking at these pictures or when you pull yours out, you can actually see that the clutch disc sits down inside there. And that's what we were fighting. So we were sending pressure plates back and forth and we finally just said, you know what, it's very difficult and we were spending a lot of money shipping stuff back and forth. 
to try to piece one together, I decided to just go with ACT. So that's my whole story. Just be super careful when you're trying to piece stuff together. The other thing that we were fighting was these alignment dowels. There's alignment dowels here on the flywheel. Uh, these ones are the bigger ones. The flywheel that I got from ECS Tuning, the lightweight one, has the smaller dowels in there. So again, you just gotta be super careful with what you're buying because uh, you're gonna end up spending money back and forth a lot and a system like this, the cheap ones can cost upwards of seven or $800. So you wanna make sure you're doing it right. Buy once, cry once. And this is now the third time that I'm crying. Again, the first time was because the pilot bearing went out. That was nobody's fault. And I'm not dissing that ECS tuning kit at all. Again, the links to this one and the other ECS tuning kit will be in the description below. I'm not dissing it at all. It was a great system. I just exceeded what that kit was able to handle. But right now we're gonna put this back together and then we're actually gonna be taking the car out for a drive and seeing how it does. So here we are breaking in this new ACT clutch. I have about 150 miles on it right now and I kind of just want to give some feedback on the way that it feels now. Obviously I can't really report until we're done breaking it in and then obviously when we're done breaking it in I will turn on the camera we can go over it again. Uh, before I get into this real quick I do want to apologize the car is noisy difficult to hear me and I might add subtitles depending on how this recording turns out. So far the clutch has been fairly easy to drive. Originally when I first when I first started driving it like the first like 10 or 15 miles was like super easy like I, di I didn't even hardly notice any difference between this and a normal clutch. It's getting worse as I drive it and I'm saying I'm saying worse as from the standpoint of a normal clutch it is soft and easy to use and this is supposed to be a performance clutch. It's unsprung, it's four puck. It's gonna to start to squeal eventually because it's ceramic and everybody knows that ceramic brakes squeal. So the, cl the clutch will squeal every now and then depending on how you engage it. And it will become more and more aggressive. You have to slow, if you let the pedal out slowly, you could kill the car. If you give it too much gas and you let the clutch out too quick, like I said, it could squeal. So it's gonna get harder and harder to drive as I go along, because that's already the pattern that I'm showing right now. So we are 150, like I just ticked over 150 miles right now. It started off pretty good, but it's getting worse. I'm getting used to it as it gets worse, because it's progressively getting worse. But so far, I'm very happy with it. It's no more or less chattery, the single mass flywheel, than the ECS tuning one that was in there. So I don't really notice that as much. The only time that I've really had the clutch squeal on me, and it made me super nervous, because I didn't know that it was gonna do that was when I was going up the driveway. So uh, to put this car up on the lift, I have to make sure that I'm lined up correctly. And obviously that takes a little bit more, you know, you have to go up the, the driveway a little bit slower. You can't just gun it up the driveway. And that's when the clutch squealed at me. And so I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more careful about uh, incline, starting on incline, stuff like that. So I don't end up burning something up. Even after the clutch is broken, things like that can happen pretty easily. So just gonna be super careful. I'm gonna continue to break it in. And then once I have it broke in, I wanna do about 450 to 500 miles on this car. I will turn the camera back on and then we can have a little bit more fun with it. And then I can give a full review and tell everybody if I recommend this clutch for your race car. All right, so we are finally done with our break-in process. We now have 526 miles on the car. Now we have done a couple pulls and we've just been really paying attention to make sure that we can't like smell the clutch burning or anything like that. We've had a couple instances where we thought we smelled something, but so far, so good. So we're gonna do some pulls here so that I can show everybody what's going on. And then we'll get some, uh, a shot or two from outside the car. And then I want to give my final review of the ACT clutch back when we get to the house.
we just got back from our first real test drive with the car now that the clutch is finally broke in completely. We are so impressed with the way that it feels, how much power can actually be delivered from the engine to the wheels versus the other one that was slipping. So I want to give my full thoughts on this clutch. So as we were breaking it in, it felt very, very normal. It felt like a normal clutch. It was kind of soft and it was easy to drive. And the more and more we drove it, the less and less that way it got. It's actually super aggressive now. It tends to kind of squeal and scream if you don't get off the clutch fast enough, especially if you're starting like on a hill. And I think that's relatively normal. I think I talked about this before, but the ceramics in that clutch will scream a little bit, just like ceramic brakes tend to squeal uh, on actual race cars, they'll squeal. So I like the way that it drives. It is a little bit hard to get used to now that the clutch is finally broke in and it's still continuing to change how it feels. It was like every time I would take it out, it felt like a different clutch and I would have to relearn it and then it would change as we started to drive. I don't smell any clutch while we fully accelerate. We did multiple pulls. I also did some where we started in some really low RPMs, uh, like 35, 40 miles an hour in like fourth gear and then punched it. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, if I was going to have somebody else purchase this, as long as your car is producing the amount of power that you need to have a clutch like this, I would say absolutely. If you've got a stock car, stock power, I would say probably not. That ECS tuning one that I had was probably the best if you wanted to just kind of do a stock clutch. If you have a bunch of power, absolutely. Or if you're planning on doing power, do a clutch like this first. What you don't want to do is what I did and buy a clutch that you think is going to work. You add a bunch of power and then you're going to have to replace the clutch again. If you're not gonna add a bunch of power, just do the ECS tuning one. If you're gonna add 400 horsepower or more, I would go with the ACT clutch. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Help support the video by hitting the like button, subscribe if you are new. Thanks to all of my most recent Patreon supporters. It's been helping out a lot. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Thanks again everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video.